Hi everyone! In this episode, we'll start tweaking our mesh generator to add noise to our planet so they can start looking more like this. Uh, this series is an attempt at porting Sebastian Lag's excellent procedural planet tutorial from Unity to Godot. So if you enjoy this, do also check out his tutorial for more detailed explanation. And that said, we're going to tweak our mesh generator by introducing noise. Now, purely random noise isn't really interesting, but Godot comes with a very nice implementation of simplex noise, which is going to be perfect for our use case. Simplex noise basically look a little bit like this, and you can tweak the parameters to get different effects and different resolution. So this is going to be basically our height map for our planet. We'll start by adding a few new exports to our data. The first one is going to be a reference to the open simplex noise algorithm of Godot that we're going to call the uh, noise map. And like I mentioned in the previous video, we shouldn't forget to add a setter if we want to be able to dynamically see the properties changing in the editor. So we'll call this set noise map and it's going to be basically the same thing as the one before. Now there's a little trick here though, because this is a resource, which means that when we modify something inside the open simplex noise, the setter is not going to be called, but it's going to, just like everything else, trigger the change signal that we'll need to forward to our planet script. So what we're going to do is something similar to what we did here in the set planet data, we're going to go into our planet data and if our noise map is not null and our noise map isn't already connected to the change event, we're going to connect to the change event and the on data change is going to be very similar again to the uh, method in planet, but this time we're going to emit the signal change on this object so that the planet can catch it. So basically this is just going to create a chain of events. So when the open simplex noise change, then it triggers the change signal here that will be caught by the planet that will trigger the undata change that will regenerate the mesh. Now we'll need another variable here in our planet data and we're going to call it the amplitude. And it's gonna be a float basically. Now in our planet mesh phase, where we calculate the position of the vertex based on the uh, data we calculated, uh, this is going to start getting a lot more complicated because we're going to add noise and eventually we're going to have several layer of noise and other stuff that are going to come and modify our position. But all of this is going to be based on the planet data. So what I'm going to do is actually create a new method inside our planet data and I'm going to call this method point on planet and it's going to take as a parameter the point on the sphere that uh, we calculated in the generate mesh and it's going to return a modified vector tree based on whatever information we want to add to the planet generation. So for now what we're going to do is simply calculate a new elevation based on our noise algorithm. The noise map has a very nice practical method called get noise 3db. And as you can see, this take as a parameter a vector tree. So we can pass it our point on a sphere and it's going to return us some kind of random value. So what we can do is have this called the elevation and if you remember, another variable we had here was our radius. So we can combine this together and return basically our point on the sphere, which is a unit vector at that point, multiplied by our radius, multiplied by our elevation. Now get noise 3 dv returns a value between minus 1 and 1. And that's not really practical for us. We'd much rather have something between 0 and 1. So what we're going to do is uh, remap this elevation from minus 1 to 1 between 0 and 1. And to do this is pretty easy. All we have to do is 
add 1, so now we have between 1 and 2, and then divide by 2, so now we have between 0 and 1. But then, since these are all multiplication, if elevation is 0, that means we are going to end up with a vector that's 0, and that's also not especially good, so we want to make sure that the minimum value we can have is 1, so we are just going to add 1 to our elevation, and with this we should be able to modify randomly the length of our vectors based on some kind of elevation around our planet. So now to use this in our planet mesh phase, what we're going to do is instead of multiplying by the radius here, what we're going to do is have var point on planet and we're going to call our method in the planet data called point on planet and we're going to pass it the point on unit sphere and then we can use the point on planet as our vector position now if we look at the result well first of all we need to go and add a new simplex noise map and now that we have this well you can see right now that it doesn't change much but as we reduce the period we should start seeing some changes now one of the thing i've noticed is that this period goes from basically 0 0.1 to well a very large number 256 but as you can see <laughs> There's a lot of range where nothing happens just because the uh, generated random shape is too big to really make a difference on our sphere that's actually only one unit in length. So a good solution for this, since we're always first normalizing before applying the radius, is to go into our planet data and where we use the point on sphere, well, I'm going to multiply it by 100 so this way, as you can see, we have much more control over the period. And we can add more detail by having more octaves and changing the persistence to make it more bumpy or less bumpy. Of course, as you can see, these triangles are starting to look a little bit ugly. That's only because our resolution is still pretty low. But if we bump up the resolution, then we'll start seeing a lot more detail. And as you can see, we can have a lot of control over the shape of our planet, which looks more like an asteroid right now. Now, one of the reasons for this is that we don't have any way to scale this. It's just basically between 0 and 1. And it'd be really nice if we could have it be more subtle or be more detailed any way we want. So to do this, if you remember, we added this amplitude. So we're going to first multiply by the amplitude and as I mentioned before add a set get so that we can see these values in the editor so now using the amplitude as you can see we can still keep our shape relatively round or we can make it really mm, asteroid like by scaling up or down the result of our random generation but we'd still like to have maybe some kind of minimum size for our planet and we'll do this by exporting a new variable that we'll call min height and we'll clamp our elevation based on this min height so we'll put it between 0 and elevation minus min height. And now, by doing this, if I increase the min height, you can see that everything is kind of going back inside the sphere. So now, we can have just a few mountains popping out from the general round shape of our planet. And you can already see a little bit the idea of continents, but there might be a little bit too high. So that's where you can play with the amplitudes to make it go back more flat or 
like just jet out a little bit from our planet. Now you can already generate some pretty interesting shape with this, but the way that octaves work, so if you don't know, increasing or decreasing the octaves mean that you're generating smaller noise on top of existing noise so that you can add more details and it's especially obvious if you increase the resolution of the planet. See, as you can see, there's a lot of little bumps here in our generally larger bump, but if you lower the uh, octaves, then these little bumps go away and we get just kind of a general vague shape. And even though this gives us a lot of control, um, these octaves are never going to be bigger than the general shape of the rest. So that means that if you want to have like some high peaks or something, then we'll have to do something else or something different. And we'll have to start layering those noise map on top of each other, which should be fairly straightforward. If we go back into our file system, we can create a new resource. So once again, something that inherit from resource and we're going to call it planet noise. And we're going to open this planet noise. We're going to erase all of this. We're going to give it a class name so we can find it in the editor. We're going to call it planet noise. And we're going to go into our planet data and where we created this min height amplitude and noise map we're actually going to bring them over into our planet noise yeah, with the setters and getters, of course. The idea is that now in our planet data, we can, instead of having just a single noise map, we can have an array of noise layers that I'm going to call planet noise. And again, since this is a resource, we have to uh, do the trick of setting it uh, recursively by registering unchange event. And now in our point on planet, instead of getting the noise from a single map, We're going to add a loop and we're going to add these elevation together. With a simple plus equal elevation. So now we can go back into our 3D view and of course what we did before just disappeared because our planet noise changed but we can go into the array and increase the size and if we add one planet noise that we have to find in the list of all the resources that exists because we created a class name and then now if we add our new simplex noise we can play around with the parameters. But you'll notice that nothing's happening, even though I set all the setters and everything. It's because, like I mentioned, all the scripts have to inherit from the tool, otherwise it's not going to work. Also, now that I change the planet noise to an array, it doesn't actually implement the change signal, because the array, when it change, is just getting set. So what we want to do is actually iterate over all our planet noise. So if it's not null and we're not connected, then you connect to your own data change. And so now, as you can see, the planet was regenerated and we can go into our resource and we can change the period to update the uh, planet. Maybe we can reduce the resolution a little bit to make it faster. But uh, for now, let's make some pretty continents, for example, maybe like this. And then we can go and adjust the amplitude and the minimum height so that we they just come out of the ocean a little bit. But like I said, if we want to add more mountains or something, then we can add 
an extra resource here and we can make it into another a planet noise but for this one for example what we could do is uh, have this one have a much smaller period so that it looks much more noisy but then have a very high minimum height so that as you can see you just have like some different details popping out of the ocean and everywhere of course sometimes what you'd like is to have these mountains only show up where there's already some kind of continent or something and we can do this by adding a mask based on the first noise texture and we'll do this by just going into our planet noise resource and we'll add a new export variable that I'm going to call use first layer as a mask again with a getter and a setter and in our planet data where we uh, calculate the uh, combined elevation we are going to change it again a little bit this time we are going to first calculate the elevation of the first layer so we're going to do if planet noise that size bigger than zero we're going to uh, create something called the base elevation and this is going to be used as a mask and what we're going to do is base elevation is going to be equal to planet noise zero dot noise map dot get noise 3dv at a point on a sphere times a hundred now this base elevation is going to be our mask so here we can say var mask equal 1.0 so by default we use it just like we would normally but if n dot use first layer as mask then we're going to say that our mask is equal to our base elevation that we just calculated so that means that at the end where we are calculating the level elevation we can multiply it by the mask so if we're not use first layer as mask then we're just going to multiply by one so it's not going to change anything but if we're multiplying by the base elevation well well the base elevation is zero then that means the mask is going to be zero that means that all of this is going to be zero so that means that we're not adding it to the elevation but if it's bigger than zero then we're going to multiply it by some kind of number between you know one and two or 1.5 or 0 0.3 or whatever and this is going to add to the elevation of the second layer of noise and so now if we go back in our 3d view and fix the errors we have and if we fix our errors so now with the first layer mask if we cl click it and we play a little bit with the amplitude you'll see that these mountains are only coming out from where the first layer comes out of the sea and we don't get any more mountains on top of the sea so that can allow us to add a lot of detail in our continents without affecting like the sea and oceans around it and that's going to be it for now. We still have a few things to add, so see you all in my next episode. Bye!